Hey guys, happy Saturday morning. Uh, I got an unboxing this morning. Actually, I've got three. Uh, first of all, we're gonna go with uh, I got some HQ 3D props from from uh, Drone Bum. These are real 3D props here. These are the good ones too, the HQ. They make some Jim Fan ones and some HQ ones. The Jim Fan ones cost like a dollar cheap. They're a dollar cheaper. But uh, I had a set of those and they didn't hold up very well. They they would uh, bend too easy at the hub. These feel really good. These I believe that dollar more is worth it for these props. Anyway, I've only got one set here. That was all he had. I appreciate it, brother. That means a lot when you only have one or something and you give it away. Uh, but I still I still have a couple of the other gym fan ones, and they look almost identical. They're just, these feel a little stronger. So, I mean, I still have a couple of single props that I hadn't bent yet out of the others that I had. So, maybe I'll get a few flights out of these before I bend them up too bad. Because uh, when you just got one set of props, if you bend one, you, you pretty much got to take the rest of them off. But luckily, I got a couple. Like I said, I got a couple of more single props in there. If I do bend it, maybe I can get a few more flats by adding those props. So, uh, Paul, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm gonna put these on my tank today with a new battery and try it and see just how well 3D actually, uh, how well I can climb both directions. You know, uh, I've been struggling with that. I want to see if it's worth it to have 3D props. All right. Uh, Mountaineer FPV sent me two new Vera Flyfinder two buzzers. Uh, like we put in, the, like we put one of these in the tank yesterday. I had just ordered one. Well, he sent me two. Now one of these he wants me. One of these is going in his drone, in that uh, Volador that I'm building, and I'm gonna film that when I wire it up, so so you guys can see how easy it is to wire up. But he sent me another one for a spare for my drone. All right. Now we've got a Mr. Crowley. You guys know Mr. Crowley. He's the one that. Uh, he flies around and he usually lands right in front of his feet and then he does some usually some crazy something like this. <laughs> I get a kick out of him. Uh, he sent me a, uh, he knows I like the CCD cameras. And I usually run the cheap run cam ones uh, because you can't get them anymore. And it's hard to find CCD cameras. And they're usually pretty cheap, the, the ones that I run. He had a Foxeer Arrow. I had an Arrow a long time ago. I loved it. It was a CCT camera. Uh, if you've got the right lens on the arrow, man, it's, it to me is as good if not better than the run cam. And so that's what he sent me here. It's the Foxeer Arrow CCD Mini FPV camera. And uh, I think the lens on it's wrong, so I may have to get a lens for it. But because the lens that's on it, I believe, is too it makes everything look too close to you. you you've, you've got on your lenses it goes from extreme of way too close to way too far away and I'm kind of right in the middle of the lens that I like. Uh, the camera I was running at the first of the year I couldn't fly good with everything looked way too far away and you couldn't hit your gaps. But when you get one with a lens like this on it it's so close up that you can't you can't tell where the ground is underneath you and all, all you can see is what's right in front of you which is great for hitting gaps but it's kind of hard makes it kind of hard to land so i may have to swap the, the lens out on it i don't know yet but i mean it's almost like new guys and it's got an extra case in here in case you crash and crack your case it's got all the stuff you'd need in there so pretty sweet all right all right you guys know Bo sent me some batteries the other day I wanted to talk about them a minute uh, he sent me some more Ovonics <coughs> which I love and he sent me some gold bat gold bat 1300s I was worried about these gold bats because for one thing, you can just tell the wire coming off of the uh, thing is smaller than this wire. 
<coughs> I think it is. <coughs> yeah. The wire, co the wire coming off the go bed is a little smaller than the one coming off the ovonic. Not by much, but a little. And I'm not real crazy about the way they run the. Uh, you see, I have to rubber band it down here. Their, their, uh, this lead here, charging lead. It doesn't come off the same side. Well, if you don't rubber band it down, the way I mount my battery, it gets into the prop and I chop this thing off. But what I was worried about was, I got a few of these from Mike here a while back, Birdman 316. And uh, they were used ones from him, and he had stored them for a while, and they kind of went bad. And I, and I didn't know, and I mean, we thought they were still new, but they just didn't, they lacked, they lacked power. And uh, so I was worried that maybe these wasn't that great of batteries. But so far, these gold bats that, that Bowie sent me have done just as good as these Ovonics. I mean, just as good. I'm tickled shitless with these batteries. I got no complaints at all. I, I can't get over. This is an expensive battery. This is a cheap battery. And this one's doing just as good as this one. So. All right, guys. Now let's talk about my tank. I guess you guys seen this yesterday when I was showing this thing, when I was putting that buzzer in, and you probably wondered, what in the hell is that big old square thing sticking on his arm there? Well, let me tell you. This is the one I put the new MEPS King 45 amp ESC in. I love that damn ESC, guys. That ESC is so smooth for 3D, and it's got loads of power. And it's made by T-Motor. Uh, when you put it in beta flight, it tells you it's a T-Motor ESC. It is a good ESC, guys, I promise you. And I have turtle motored this thing and took off upside down in the grass and crashed. And I'm talking about, uh, I've had it stuck in the tree so bad the other day that I couldn't get it out. I couldn't reach it with my cane. So I thought the only way to get it out is just to work, just turn it on, full throttle it, go back and forth with the motors until you know either I break a prop break a limb something happens to her until it comes down well what ended it up happen was I screwed the props off it, uh, me hitting it back and forth so hard it, it eventually screwed the props off and then it fell out of the tree and that didn't blow the ESC but I have blowed a MOSFET on the ESC and I'll tell you how <laughs> I didn't check my motor I didn't check my motor screws well enough between flights and one of the motors flew off the other day when I was flying it and I was pretty much at full throttle when it happened. The motor fell off, twisted up, you know how to do, and then it yanked the wires in two and all them little strands kind of twisted together. Well that's a dead short. Ain't no ESC going to withstand that. And when that happened it, it smoked one of the ESCs just on one, one corner. All the rest of the ESCs on the rest of the board are fine. So, I didn't have a single ESC to put on the arm here. So I just took a, another old ESC that I had blown two corners on. And only two corners still worked. A little 20 by 20 ESC. And I mounted it on the arm. So now I've got two 4 and one ESCs on this quad. And they don't sync up exactly. Sometimes you, when I fly it, you'll see it kind of do a little funny dip or something. And that's because this ESC is not timed exactly with this ESC. But it works. I'll throw a, I got a picture before I taped it up somewhere in there. I'll, I'll, if, I, if I can find it, I'll throw it in here where you can see what I, exactly what I did. But it still flies pretty damn good, guys, even with two 4-in-1 ESCs on it that don't match up. So anyway, I, I contacted MEPS, and they're sending me another 4-in-1 ESC because I really liked it so well. Uh, but I'm going to keep running this one until it, you know, I, it won't run anymore, which it should last a long time like it is. And I'm also getting a, a F7 Mini flight controller from them because uh, I know it's a T-Motor flight controller too and so <coughs> I'm gonna be reviewing that guys guys you see my cats they're about three months old now uh, 
I got four of them, four kittens, three months old. And the damn mama cat that had them, she's done pregnant again. She's done got a belly this big on her, which means she's about a month away from having them. So now if we can have another another uh, litter of kittens. Holy shit. We're going to have so many kittens running around here. I ain't going to know what to do with. The ones of you that saw the full video yesterday of my place here noticed that I had a lot of tools and a lot of you was amazed and said something about it. Well, you got to understand, uh, we, we've been here for 48 years. You accumulated a lot of stuff over the years. But uh, my dad was in the military in uh, Vietnam and he worked on tanks. And uh, when he got out, first thing he did was built a shop and started gathering tools. And so we've accumulated a lot. And uh, he went to work at this plant and became a plant engineer and maintenance supervisor. And uh, he would bring uh, a lot of the hydraulic cylinders and stuff like that home and work on them in the shop because he was on call 24 hours a day and he would take them back to work the next day and then install them back on the machine. Uh, so he had to have a set of tools here and there to plant. And uh, then later on I became a, a, a maintenance guy under, under my dad for about five years at that same plant so I had to have my own set of tools. So we accumulated a lot of tools. Then I got into go-kart racing and then we had to have special tools to do all that. So I ended up with some more tools that way. And then uh, after he retired and uh, the plant shut down, we uh, we both opened up a shop about four miles from here, three or four miles from here. My granddad died and left us a building and about an acre and a half of land. It's a building kind of like that one up there. Maybe not quite as big, not as long, but it's, it's as wide. It's got two doors, one that rolls up and, and, two, and two doors that open up like this and close. So it's a two-bay garage. I put a car lift in it and a couple of hoists in it. So half the shop done lawnmower work, the other half the shop done automotive work. My dad did the lawnmower work, I did the automotive work. Uh, and then we helped each other out, you know. So we ended up putting a lot of tools in there. And uh, when we closed that down, when his Alzheimer's got bad, I brought all them tools back to here. So that's how why there's so many tools here, guys. Uh, I plan on opening that shop back up. That's my retirement plan. When my, when uh, if something happens to my mom, that's how I'll get by is to open that shop back up and do oil changes and tune-ups and stuff like that and lawnmower work. And uh, that's a hell of a retirement, I know, but it's the only choice I got. I have to work. Looks like it might be a beautiful day here, guys. I don't know. My grass needed mowing yesterday, and I like to mow when it's when it's cool and damp and it, it, it's, it got bad yesterday and started raining but it was just a light drizzle so I thought I'm gonna go out and mow and it was about five o'clock so it got kind of it got kind of dark and wind was blowing a little bit so I come out and started mowing and I was about 30 minutes into it, it takes like two and a half three hours to mow this place I got about 30 minutes into it and it, and I could have swore I seen a tornado over those trees over yonder but it wasn't it was just the way the clouds come down they was dark and, and scared me there for a minute and then the wind got to blowing really hard and now it was it was just barely drizzling rain but it was dark and the wind was blowing really hard and, and it started lightning everywhere around here I'm talking about big old boats of lightning that was going boom boom <laughs> I started to quit mowing but I thought nah hell I want to get this done and this is the perfect time and I'm, I'm kind of one of them guys that believes if it's your time to go you're gonna go no matter what and if it ain't your time to go even if a bolt of lightning strikes you it ain't gonna kill you might hurt like hell but it ain't gonna kill you and if it is your time to go, whether you get struck by lightning or you're sitting in your recliner, if it's your time to go, something's going to happen to you like a heart attack or something to cause you to die. So I went on in mode. I was a little scared every time it would boom and lightning, I would duck my head like that. But I got her done, except for the front yard here. Uh, it got to raining pretty hard and I quit then. Well, I got my Runcam 5 fixed. I talked to them the other night and got that sorted out. Now it's recording right. Now my GoPro's screwing up on me. I don't know my, my GoPro session. It's recording. It'll record like a minute and a half to two and a half minutes, and then it'll just cut itself off, and it don't save the recording. Uh, I put a new memory card in it, brand new memory card a while ago, so I'm hoping that solves the problem. I know that memory cards can get corrupted. Well, guys, it looks like it might be a beautiful day here today. I don't know if it is, I'm gonna to try to fly a little. And I may do some work down there on Bose Quad, I don't know yet. But uh, 
it's Saturday, so I hope all you guys have a great day, and I hope you get to fly, and I hope the weather is perfect for you wherever you're at. And uh, just try to enjoy yourself and have a great weekend, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.